Okay, these puppies are just blowing me away. Uh, every single puppy has been high for confidence, low for sight and sound sensitivity. Perfect example, just as I was about to start filming this, uh, our smoke alarm started going off. Uh, my daughter was trying to dehydrate these little clay people that she made and apparently, and she put it in the air, air fryer, which also dehydrates, but it was on air fryer mode and uh, she smoked them. The whole house was like full of smoke and the alarm was going off and the puppies were just like sitting there playing ho-hum like nothing, nothing was even happening. So anyways, uh, our sound and sight sensitivity is working is the moral of the story. So, noodle. Okay, we're gonna talk about noodles, uh, temperament evaluation. Uh, what you're gonna notice is like the scale of low, medium, high. Low is not bad and high is not good. It is just a spectrum. So, what you'll notice is the first thing I do is I pop the puppy into the temperament testing area. It's a new uh, room in our home that they don't spend a lot of time with. There's new obstacles and different things like that. So the first thing I'm looking for is confidence. Is her tail up? Is her tail down? Is she nervous? Is she kind of sitting in the corner looking for direction? What does she do? Her tail is high and she is checking everything out and she really couldn't be bothered that nobody else is there. So she's got a little bit of natural independence about her, um, which is quite nice for a family who maybe has jobs and they work out of the home. And the next thing that I notice is assertiveness. So I get into the testing area and then I'm looking for how the puppy approaches me. Are they kind of like nervous and they're army crawling? Um, I gave her a high for human assertiveness. Um, when she noticed me, she kind of hopped into my lap and was trying to get kisses to my face. And she does this a few times through the temperament testing. And the other thing that I noticed was about that little bit of natural independence is like, even though I was in there, she didn't need me right away. She wasn't looking for my for my guidance. She was confident enough to just be on her own. Um, but then again, she also, uh, so motivation level, her workability, her desire to please people, she scored a high here as well. So she really wants to please her people. And I noticed this as I was playing fetch. And so I kept tossing the um, little tug toy and she kept bringing it back to me. And that's her way of saying, yes, I like this. What do you want next? What are we up for? And um, that's a really fun trait, a puppy that wants to please us and they want to uh, do as we ask and they always wanna know what's up, what's up, what's up next. Whereas a puppy that maybe has like lower motivation, um, they're you, they often can be kind of like, their mentality is a little bit more like, hey, what's in it for me? Um, do you have food? Do you have toys? So a puppy that naturally wants to work for us is a, um, it's a really great trait. Nerve strength, resiliency. Uh, how do they handle stress? Their ability to handle stress. And what I noticed was that she handled it like a champ. I didn't notice any signs of stress during her evaluation. I did notice some wonderful calming behaviors. So you'll notice a few times she does like a shake, a full body shake. That is a calming signal in a dog. So it means that she knows how to handle stress very well. Um, she just kind of shook it off and away she goes. Other than that, like I didn't see pinned ears back. I didn't see yawning. There was no, um, you know, like sitting in the corner or shaking. None of that. She handled stress beautifully. Touch tolerance. Okay. So I could have given her a high because what we're looking for with touch tolerance is, um, not if they enjoy it, but how, how tolerant are they to it? So when we go to the vet and we go to the groomers, we don't need them to enjoy this kind of handling, but it is very helpful when they are tolerant to it. And this is one of those adjustable traits that every family should be working on with their dog. I want you um, to be handling your dog every single day, building their touch tolerance. And what you'll notice is that she absolutely let me do all of the things. The only reason I scored her a medium, maybe instead of a high, is because one, we can keep working on it. And two, when I had her on her back, she was, very tolerant, but she wasn't totally relaxed. She wasn't necessarily like melting into that moment, um, if that makes sense. So touch tolerance, as long as the family keeps working on it for any puppy, um, yeah, she's got a great foundation. She's gonna be great here. Energy level, I gave her a medium. Um, she has some fast paced times and then there was other times where she walked and she wasn't quite as fast paced, more just like exploratory. Whereas a high energy dog, they don't stop moving. Their vibe is like, 
larger than life and they keep spinning circles and they run the whole time. This wasn't her. She had some in-betweens and also you can see, especially at the end, like very much when I pick her up, she just like melts into your neck. Um, she's very happy to kind of calm down and cuddle. Uh, sound and sight sensitivity. So what you notice is I pop the umbrella and we're looking for like startling sights when something is fast moving or it's big and this often happens when kids are running through the house or there's other like big motions. How does the puppy handle this? Or if they're walking down the street and suddenly like the garbage can blows by, how sensitive are they going to be to that and how well are they going to recover? And that's kind of the ticket. I'm not worried about whether they notice or not. What I'm looking for is did it stress them out and did they recover? And so, so, so far every single puppy in this litter has scored low for sight and sound sensitivity, meaning they really weren't bothered by any like big movements or big sounds. So I also have like that shaker, the Fisher, Fisher Price popper, the shaker, I shake it and make a loud noise and see if she startles and see if she recovers. And she just immediately came over to check it out and she was exploring it. So um, that's fantastic. It's, this is kind of one of those traits where we're looking for in terms of like that bomb proof puppy that uh, is just phased by very little. Um, Prey drive. I gave her a medium because she was happy to play with toys, but it wasn't so intense that I think it's going to be challenging to work with. But she did have some interest. Um, so a medium prey drive is really nice. They then you know we can distract distract them a little bit with toys, and they. Uh, I think that she's probably going to enjoy a good game of fetch, which is a really fun trait for a dog. Human focus. So I gave her a medium. She really likes being with her people. She really loves uh, being with our family members. Uh, and. What I noticed though at the beginning is she didn't come boogieing straight over for me. She didn't need me. She has a little bit of a natural independence. So as I mentioned, a family that's maybe like busier with sports or they're home with just a little bit less, she's going to naturally be more okay with this than a puppy that has a high human focus. Um, and we're going to have to maybe work on those boundaries a little bit more. She just, I think, naturally be a little bit uh, more comfortable with that situation. Okay, tenderheartedness. Here was a funny one. Um, so I scored her a moderate uh, because she did check in on me. So what happens is I lay down on the floor and I pretend to have a tantrum and I'm crying and she doesn't really care at the beginning and then she kind of sees me and then she kind of like does a quick little check in and it's like, hey, are you okay? And then she boogies out of there. Like she wasn't bothered by emotions. She could totally handle it. But she's like, nah, I'm not sticking around for this. <laughs> This is an excellent trait for a home that maybe has uh, anxiety or depression. Um, a puppy that is highly tender hearted um, or extremely tender hearted cannot handle those emotions. And so we need these puppies that are maybe a little bit tender, a little bit less tender hearted. I know the initial part of it is like, oh, the dog didn't care. She did. She totally came in and checked in and was like, hey, are you good? Yeah? Okay, we need to go play now. Um, and that's an excellent trait for um, a home with somebody that needs a little bit motivation, right? So if somebody is struggling for uh, that, that dog is not going to take the weight of the world onto their selves. And um, yeah, they can handle big emotions, which is really helpful in a home with like emotional kids um, or even emotional adults. So uh, I thought it was really cute. <laughs> she did a quick check and then she booed out of there. Dog friendliness. I gave her a neutral. Um, it doesn't mean that she doesn't want to be with dogs. It's just like how she approached. She was kind of polite and she kind of sniffed the dog's chest. And I know it's a fake dog, so it's not the best. Uh, I do notice that she enjoys wrestling with the litter mates and she likes playing with the adult dogs. And so whether it's a dog friendly home already or doesn't have a dog, she's going to be great either way. Um, yeah, so no worries there. If you have any questions about Noodle, let me know. She's going to be a really fun, well-rounded, um, easy going puppy. She's going to have some energy if you want to be a jogger. And then she's also going to be ready to cuddle for that movie night. So 